one, the creator of the universe singled out the uniqueness of the human species from all created beings. As the Torah says that Adam was created in the image of God. We need to realize what is the meaning of the image of God because that God doesn't have any image. It's a spiritual thing, okay? Spiritual thing doesn't have any image. Um, but I will say it like that. Um, God, I, I need to be very careful with my words, okay? It's like a game, but, but it's, it's a serious game. It's, it's not a game, it's a serious game. God is basically saying, um, I'm withdrawing back from this world. I created this world and I'm watching from, from far, far away. I didn't finish the world. I brought it to 95% of what it is. The rest, you, the people, the human spices, okay? How do you call it here? The human being, uh, human spices. Uh, you need to finalize this world that it will be in the best shape that it could be, a long history. So for that, I'm giving you the power, just like God, the image of God. Just like I have the ability to create this world, you have some sort of ability to bring this world to a better shape from where it started. If you will look for a moment in the last uh, 5,000 years, you will see that the human managed to move very far, you know, to, to, to a stage that he is not an animal, but he is much more a human being. <laughs> not only with the technology side, but also with the behavior. Because if you will look for a moment, even 100 years ago, that there were very big two wars, a uh, world war in, in the world. And in those war, wars, we saw that uh, the value of men was very low and people were killed very, in a very simple way, or quite like that. Today, um, most of the world understands not to kill people. If you will go 500 years ago, it was very easy to kill someone. So the world is managing to move ahead. And God is giving, God gave the, the human uh, people some sort of a, a, a powers. Basically, it's the free will, okay? We don't get this free will from the potato that we eat, even if you will do from this uh, chips, okay? The, nothing have here free will except for the human. So this free will that we have is some sort of the image of God that also have free will to bring the world to a better place. And it's a very big uniqueness that only human have this uniqueness. Please read the number two. The Jewish tradition holds that the creator has sealed the covenant with human beings, which primarily includes seven commandments known as the Noahide laws. We spoke about this, so let's read out the also number three. Every person has an obligation to accept the binding validity of the seven commandments that were commanded to the descendants of Noah. This is very important. Every person is supposed to take this on himself and to say, okay, I'm accepting it. You can say it for himself as we have on the internet also the possibility of doing it for yourself and getting the certificate that you did it. And you can do a better stage also to do it in front of three rabbis. And this, then you're managing to um, overcome for all of the rabbis of Israel. Some of them are saying you say it only for yourself. Some of them, of them are saying say it in front of the rabbis. And if you're saying it only for yourself, it's not enough. So if you will say it in front of the rabbis, you're doing it, you know, it, it, everybody is saying, fair enough, this is uh, great. Why do you need to, to accept it on yourself? This is very important. These are a few um, minimum uh, understanding for these points. So I will say uh, two points. Point number one, is when someone is getting married, why is he supposed to say, um, you are going to become my wife and she's saying, you're going to become my, my husband. Why are you saying it? Why people are saying it? I want to marry you, that's it, let's go. I will give you a ring, you will give me a ring, let's go. Why am I saying it also with my mouth? It's some sort of an obligation that I'm taking on myself. Today, we understand this much better with the, all of the um, new age uh, things that is happening in this world. When you're stating things, you are moving your mind from one state to another state. So this is the first thing. Yes, I'm saying to myself, God obeyed me to take a few things. 
and I'm accepting it. It's, it's a state that you're doing, doing to yourself. This is uh, point number one. Point number two is uh, by saying it, you're basically stating that it's not that you are, I'll say it like that. We are, we are very clever people. We have minds, we have the mindset, we have a, we have a possibility of knowledge, we have the possibility of seeking and searching things and defining things. We have a lot of things with this mind. So let's go for example, that I want to search and to understand this uh, small device that we call it the clock. How exactly it's being built, who built it, what, uh, who did it and everything else and how it's being built. And, and I want to open it and to place all the uh, small tiny bitty things of this, uh, to spread it on the table and then to build it to organize, recover it back for, from the beginning. So the mindset, I will say the subtext of my mindset is that I'm the person in charge and this thing, I'm controlling it, right? I have enough brain to control it. Now let's go for a moment and let's try to speak about God on the same level. Who is God? How exactly is performance in this world? Everything else. What is the subtext of the, of, of the situation? My mind is judging God. It's not, the next step will be that some of the people will say he's not existed. <laughs> because after all, who is in charge? My mind, myself, my knowledge. God, secondary. He's, he's a bit better, in a, bit, a better shape than the clock. But still, I'm deciding in what frame to put in, what exactly his measurement and everything else with my understanding. And when you're stating, now listen good, when you're stating that you're accepting the seven laws of Noah because God gave them, you're saying something else in your mindset. You're saying to yourself, God gave us something perfect. And if I don't understand it, I want, I wish to learn and to understand everything there. And if I don't understand it, it's because I am not um, uh, smart enough to understand the wisdom of God. And who is the most important here in the subtext? God. Who is secondary? Me. This is the deep inside statement of saying, yes, God, you gave me those seven laws and the rest of the laws and I'm obeying you. You are the most important. Now, this is something that to express this in a popular way, it's much, it's very hard. Maybe we need to organize a special, you know, a three minutes of, of a, I will say, a three minutes of video and to start to spread it all, all over. And when rabbis are saying, ah, it's nonsense. This is because all those rabbis are saying twice a day, the wording, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad, we all know this sentence, okay? Oh God of Israel, you are one. And they are accepting on themselves twice a day with wording that God is almighty. He is excellent. And if I don't understand anything or something, it's because I'm not 1% in the level of understanding. So they're doing this twice a day, and they are saying, no, don't do those nonsense, you know, as a Noachite. I don't know why. <laughs> now we're starting to realize in a profound way, why are we working like that? Now I'm not, I'm not fighting any other rabbi. Those who don't want to say, you know, saying don't say this, fair enough. I know there is the Ritva, they don't need to say. But now you're starting to realize what we are doing here. We are bringing the world to another stage. And I think it's very important. It's not only by doing all sorts of a ceremony. It's more than that. It's changing ourselves in a journey to the next stage.